In this video, I'll talk about regression discontinuity design, what it is, what it achieves, when you should use it for a client's project, and when you should not use it for a client's project. Regression discontinuity design is a quasi-experimental design that tries to estimate the effect of an intervention or a program. And if you don't know what a quasi-experimental design is, check out my previous video that talks about validity and impact evaluations. When treatment assignment is based on a single continuous variable and people are assigned to treatment or control based on a cutoff on that variable, that's the ideal time to use a regression discontinuity design. When you have such a study and you plot the continuous variable along the x-axis and the likelihood of being in the treatment group on the y-axis, what you expect to see is that right around that cutoff, you see a dramatic change in the likelihood of being in the treatment or the control group. A regression discontinuity design uses this fact to estimate the treatment effect of the program or intervention. The idea is right around this cutoff, the students who are just above the cutoff are nearly identical to the students who are just below the cutoff. And the idea is that there is no real difference between the two. So it's sort of like if you had an experimental design and you were to just randomly assign students to just above the cutoff or just below the cutoff. That gets at the heart of the regression discontinuity design. The estimate of the effect of the treatment is really depending on the students or the people that are just around that cutoff. Because of this fact, you should use a regression discontinuity design when the treatment assignment is based on a single continuous variable. Like students who are assigned to a math intervention, if they score below a particular number on a math assessment in the fall. Now there are times when you should not use a regression discontinuity design. For example, when the treatment assignment is not just based on a single variable. And this is pretty common, so you may have an intervention in which students are assigned to the intervention on the basis of a continuous score, like the fall assessment on a standardized math score, but it might also depend on the previous spring's score or a teacher recommendation. And that teacher recommendation may be influenced by several factors, which may in turn influence the outcome. And when you have this sort of thing going on, then treatment assignment is not just based on that single continuous variable. And as a result, you can't really argue that the students right around that cutoff are identical because there are potentially a lot of other factors that went into that determination and that could result in a biased estimate of the treatment effect. Another thing to keep in mind with the regression discontinuity design is that because the estimate is really based on the sample right around that cutoff, if you want to generalize to a broader population, like let's say all students that score below a particular cutoff, then a regression discontinuity design is not the uh, best way to go. Because again, the sample that's really leveraged when you're estimating the treatment effect is those people around that cutoff. Another time to not use a regression discontinuity design is if that cutoff that determines whether or not they receive the intervention that you care about is also used to determine inclusion in other treatments. That should be pretty straightforward as to why you wouldn't want that because now you're talking about other ways that the students who were in the treatment that you care about or in the control that you care about might be different because they could have received other treatments based on that same cutoff. 